you put in a solid oxide fuel cell, you can go for a high power density, but since the operation is at an 800 degree centigrade, it's all in a ceramic base. And how you can fabricate together, and how it's going to seal together, and what are the corrosion issues. Therefore, there are a significant lot of challenges there, and a lot of opportunities are there in those high temperature fuel cells. For I just wanted to make, give it a perspective of what each type of fuel cell gear for and what application. And in each one of these things, uh, we have an, an potential opportunity from an academia wise. And each in the fuel cell uh, developers around the world, including uh, this right now, there's a lot of focus going on in all these uh, four areas. And uh, there's a significant opportunity to make uh, a collaboration between the fuel cell developer as well as the industry. I think that uh, some of the groups here in, uh, in uh, Canada and in US and some academia, they are doing so, but still there is a long term to uh, a lot of things we can do in this uh, aspect. For going, this is a name, uh, a background. From a catalyst, I think that, as I said, <coughs> for all the fuels, next slide, please. The fuel cell needs the hydrogen. Therefore, where does the hydrogen come from? It has to come from anywhere from a hydrocarbon source, which can be from as a fossil fuel, or it can be from renewable fuel, or it can be from any petroleum source. In all these cases, you, it does require how you can process it and make this in a hydrogen production more economic way. Or if you take it in a general, the fuel train to get this in an achievement, there are a number of steps as such it is there in the fuel processing train. For the, uh, here I'm just, I think, sorry, I think it looks like the slide has been something missing, but the major components are there. But in all these fuels, the major component is, is in a fuel cleanup. It is, uh, it is required for all the fuel cells. For which happen to be either in the sulfur or it can be any other component, therefore you need to be in a cleanup. For uh, the conventional technologies are available to remove these sulfurs by a different variety of uh, approaches like an HDS or an absorbent or an, a, a selective oxidation. Therefore, still there are opportunities in this particular uh, desulfurization, which is an, an essential part of for all fuel cell developers. And if you're going for an inhabitant uh, production, therefore there are other uh, uh, number of other steps where all the catalyst involvement is there. Then a shift catalyst, or a deforming catalyst, or a CO oxidation catalyst, and including in a combustion catalyst. Therefore, if you see in a whole power plant as such, there are at least five to six different type of catalysts that are uh, involved. Therefore, which is in a cleanup catalyst, are you going for a reforming, or a shift catalyst, or an oxidator catalyst. For in all these things, there is a room for an improvement. We have an, we, we come to the stage where for a uh, compact size and the volume is in a constraint. That means the majority of the uh, volume is taken up by some of these components that is true especially for the ship catalyst. Therefore, we have a uh, still room for uh, going for and uh, see how we can make these things better. For I want to give an example in all these things where uh, here is something uh, the slides okay it's all solid. Go to the next slide. For the desulfurization, as I mentioned to you, there are a number of approaches either the uh, on the one side I just mentioned about an HDS and the other side I mentioned about an absorbent. Each has its own advantages and its disadvantages. From a fuel cell, the system perspective, it has to be simpler and it has to be cost effective. Therefore, there is an, uh, still uh, well, every fuel cell developer is working in this aspect, especially depends upon the fuel. If you are looking for an logistic fuel, this is a major constraint. And this is a major issue, and this is a major opportunity. I, I would call it as a window of opportunity rather than an issue. And uh, Dr. Sang's group is working heavily in this area, and uh, uh, and still uh, there are other groups as well. And still there is a big lot of opportunity in this uh, field. But I want to go to the next level, uh, this uh, next another perspective uh, from a mechanistic understanding point. For uh, in a fuel cell, if you have an anode and a cathode and a matrix and then a transfer of electrons and going from ion to one side to the other, before there is a lot of things in the trial layer mode is happening. There are different things happening at the same time. Therefore, we need to understand the mechanistic wise how these things are happening. For those are the another thing which fundamentally I think uh, uh, another opportunity we should focus on. Next slide, please. <coughs> As I uh, mentioned, these are the, some of the, uh, uh, I think, the technology areas in uh, most of the fuel cell developers are looking, heavily looking, and still need a breakthrough. And that is true, especially in terms of in hydrogen production-wise. The hydrogen production can be in a storage or in a producing and an onboard, 
onboard farming is already been uh, is no more in a DOH uh, goal. And uh, the how to produce this may hydrogen at a lower cost is right now the direction. This is the storage at the uh, uh, or how in a low cost one. Uh, other things which are in a hydrogen membranes, which are in a key area right now in this aspect, and an electrocatalysis, as I mentioned to you, this is in a, a lot of uh, how you can reduce this in a platinum loadings. And then also this has a fuel processing catalyst requirements, we have a lot of opportunity as there also. For this last slide, I would like to mention about this in a, a, one example on the hydrogen production, where the uh, ambitious goal from a, a DOE Department of Energy in US has a goal of how you can produce this hydrogen at an, a, a $1.50 per an, a kilogram of an hydrogen production, uh, the value at the uh, end of the uh, process which is in a very ambitious goal as such. Right now, it is in the most uh, uh, technology which is in an, uh, available, which is maybe $5 or even more than. For uh, there's in a lot of groups right now working on this in a hydrogen. As John was also mentioning about this in a hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. That is hydrogen is uh, right now the buzzword anywhere if you want to put money, right now in the US, and the others anywhere. Therefore, there's in a lot of scope and a lot of opportunity which we can have from a fuel cell developer and then also from an uh, academia to uh, interact and come out this in some of this breakthrough to make this in a fuel cell into a reality. I hope this is going to happen and there's a lot of things you can contribute in this direction. <coughs> I have to take any questions.